Welcome back to Usaifan Air Sport Night Superstars. We have come to the last game of the day. It's time for Dota 2. My name is Vivek, with me is CloudX and you're watching the Yodas take on the Akramaks. Yodas, they've had um, a lot working in their favour, especially since they switched up low roles and they put 11 on the 4 position and Acme on to the 5 position. This was, well, the only team that's managed to take a, that's managed to take a game off the marksman and uh, they seem to be the team to beat for the time being. The problem is Yodas are coming into this match with uh, a slightly, I would say, unmotivated mindset. They actually lost all of their games today. Akramax ah, won literally everything. So a lot of responsibility now lies on the Yodas Dota 2 squad to pull back some points in their favour. They're going to start with the Visage ban. They're going to get the Earth Spirit banned out shortly after. We've seen the Earth Spirit being picked up, but unfortunately he hasn't had much success so far at the U Cypher League. Just in the early episode, we saw Crusaders having a bit of a rough run with the Earth Spirit on their own side. Yeah. Akramux, they'll go ahead and ban out the Doom and the Viper, two of the most potent heroes in the U-Cypher League. We've seen the Doom being picked time and again. Uh, his success has been debatable. We don't know if the Doom is indeed top tier material right now. But the Viper is something that teams are not having... Uh, they, they don't really have an answer to right now. It's sort of... Uh, it's a hero that everyone is figuring out how to play against. Uh, the Nether Toxin, something new, it's something that hasn't really worked too well. It, it's something that we haven't seen super effective just yet. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think this has to be one of the few patches in the history of Dota 1 and Dota 2 where there have been so many bans on the Viper. Yeah. I haven't seen Viper become such a point of contention. It just goes to show, show how much the game developed, how viable almost every hero in the pool is. And uh, Ice Frog and the rest of the guys at Valve are doing a fantastic job with the game. Yeah, that's they're going to open with the Venom Answer. They're still keeping a little bit of green in their lineup. While the Aftermax, they pick up uh, the Earth Shaker as well as the Mirana. I mean, it'd be silly to put this Mirana on the four position. More and more Miranas are playing, are being played in the mid lane. As you can see, loves that Mirana in the mid lane. And my game is bugged out and I've disconnected from the server. to quickly join in. Yeah, well, so far it looks like it's uh, just you, Shoggy and Max that disconnected. So, no real uh, disruption to the draft just yet. The okay. captains can continue to pick their heroes and you're back in as well, so yep. no real harm done. But yeah, Venomance is being picked up by Yodas in addition to that lungs. undying. This has the makings of a push. It's a lot of early magic damage coming out. There's a good amount of synergy between the Venomance and the undying as well. In the sense that they're both uh, packing a whole bunch of slows. The damage over time takes with the Venomancer work even more efficiently with the Here's Undying the stealing desire. strength away from you. It's pretty much a match made in heaven right now, but one that can be countered. Octomux yep. have gone with the Earth Shaker, like you said, tried and tested pick that comes out in the first phase very ever so often. Mirana's their follow-up pick, another pick that's proven to be extremely potent after the, the buffs to the leap. The three charges yeah. on the leap make her extremely Game mobile in fight. And at the moment, Yodas, they're lacking lockdown. Mirana's gonna have a field day versus what we see. Uh, yeah, and uh, next set of bands, uh, Akramux, they banned out the Jatiro, just halting that push uh, that could come out from the Yodas. Well, the Yodas have banned out the ancient apparition. I like this. It's smart. Um, Undying is one of those heroes that really relies on his huge HP pool yeah. and his ability to heal up from time to time with the Soul Rip and, of course, the Flesh Golem mode. The ancient apparition is pretty much a hard counter to the Undying, and they've gone ahead and banned it. Smart stuff coming out from Yodas there. Now, this does open up their draft. Uh, they could look to pick up a straight up heal bomb push lineup coming out. I'm thinking heroes like the Abaddon, the Omni Knight, maybe even a Dazzle as your five position. These are all very viable picks for Yodhas. The only problem which continues to persist in that scenario five is the lack of lockdown. Remaining. Yeah. Which is why the others have banned out the Weaver. They're sensing that they might not have answers to the Weaver if uh, the Aftermans do pick it up. Already the Mirana might be an issue for them. They do not want to deal with another highly mobile core. Akramux, they've played it safe so far. They've got decent team fight, and they're going to continue playing it safe. They pick up the Lich, a non-committal five position. That, I mean, at least in our minds, doesn't offer too much in the lane. But well, why not? They gave it to them. They gave them the Bloodseeker Venom duo. 
this is now take all that we said about Mirana's mobility and throw it straight out the window. Yeah. Because if she gets tagged by a venomous gale and possibly the poison nova, the bloodseeker is just gonna set his sights on her and run her down Ten even through seconds. those three leap charges. Mm -hmm. It's suddenly looking like a Yoda centric draft. The last remaining. time we saw Yo we saw an, a bloodseeker being run, I. Th I think it was via the Yakshas, I may be mistaken, but that's the one that stands out to me. The Yakshas did run one with Akrit. With Akrit playing the Bloodseeker, but I don't think they had too much success with it because he played a fairly passive playstyle with the Bloodseeker and that's not how he's meant to be played. Yodas, on the other hand, they've shown that they have what it takes to play super aggressive early game Dota. 11, we've seen him run that 4-position Spirit Breaker just earlier on, which, which actually got them victory versus the Marksman. He's turned into this tempo controller's captain of sorts that's really leading the team from the front lines. And the Bloodseeker fits perfectly into that sort of playstyle that wants to fight early and wants to rack up that early lead and advantage coming into the mm -hmm. mid-game stage. I'd still like to see Yodas pick up some lineup, uh, some lockdown. Excuse me, there's still potential for that in the lineup. Otherwise, everybody's just going to be teeping away from the Bloodseeker and the Venomance, and that's going to be frustrating. So you ideally want, I mean, if the Undying is your four, you want a five or at least a three position to have some sort of lockdown. So people are just not teeping right in front of your face. Uh, Next pick for Akramux, they're possibly looking uh, at one of the codes here, and it's going to be the Bristleback. Huh. <laughs> well, I mean, there's pure damage on the side of Yodas, you've got damage over time, which the Bristleback can kind of deal with. He's a potential pipe of inside builder as well, yeah. so it's sort of the meat shield that you just throw out on the front lines, ensuring that uh, he's basically soaking up most of the damage and dishing out whatever he can, Five while Yotas are then left uh, fending off a Mirana from the sides and possibly an Earth Shaker being set up for the Echo Slam as well. You know, um, I'm, I'm going to take a risk here, but I think Venomancer is a support in this draft. I mean, th this pick is probably going to tell it all, but I've gone all in, I've gone balls deep, and I call out this Venomancer as a support. I think they're running some sort of a try in with these three heroes, uh, but I could be wrong. It's, uh, I mean, I wouldn't put it past them. A support Venomancer, while we haven't seen it in a long time, is not entirely out of favour. Yeah. It's something that could work well, especially given the undying alongside the Venomancer. Mm -hmm. But and I personally would prefer to see this Venomancer core. on the core, just because of the synergy between the Venom and the Bloodseeker. Okay. Undying, uh, I, I hope they do run this and dying against the Bristleback, whichever lane the Bristleback goes to, because that Dyer's DK is going to add up. And yes, I was wrong. We're going to see the Spirit Breaker once again. There's some sorts of lockdown to ensure that no BTPs in front of their faces if they are tagged by the Rupture. And once again, 11, hoping to control the game and its tempo by playing that Spirit Breaker. So, there's not too many ways to deal with that Spirit Ten Breaker here. Seconds. The only real way of stopping him in his tracks is if you can arrow him while he's charging Five in at you or if you can remaining. drop a Fissure on him yeah. from range. It's not the most reliable way of stopping a charging mad cow at you, but I, I, I don't know. I, I still think Eleven has shown some serious prowess on that hero and Yodas, they found their comfort zone, they found Here's what's working the for them. Plan. And they're just going to pick the same thing over and over again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Truer words have never been spoken and mm -hmm. Yodas. They're going to buy it by them. So, I'm also worried about certain aspects of the team fight for the Yodas. Uh, there are three melee heroes that really need to get close. The Spirit Breaker is going to get close. The Bloodseeker, I mean, just the Rupture is not going to net you a kill. All of this could line up for meaty chain cross sometime in the mid game, provided the Lich is still alive through all of that. Yeah. Uh, heck, I could see this happen. You send the Bristle back ahead, everybody maybe tries to commit on the Bristle back. If he, he's got a little bit of mana resistance, he's going to survive the initial burst. And then you have to commit balls deep. And then Lich is just waiting to drop that perfect chain cross. It's small, but it might happen. And it's, it's all the more tempting to run you know, like the Earthshaker in these scenarios. They've chosen a banner on Necrophos and They've chosen to ban out the Centaur as well. I think the I'm Necrophos ban was in response to the AA mm. ban coming out from the Yodas. The AA ban uh, immediately resulted in uh, in the Akramaks just banning out the Necrophos, not wanting to take any chances of letting it slip through. Uh, they ban out the Centaur, it's possibly something like, I, I guess it's something the Akramaks know that we don't about the Yodas' preferences in the off lane. Uh, Kale is their offlaner. I'm sure he plays a lot of center. Center is also one of the heroes on Dota buff who has an extremely high win rate in 7.07. I'm not sure why, 
I fully don't understand this, but if you do take a look at Dota Buff, Centaur is one of the zeros that's coming out on top in the offlane. Hmm. Well, he does have some fairly tempting talents to pick up. I mean, evasion at level 10 versus magic resistance at level 10, he becomes a lot more tanky. Um, yeah, so it was kind of one of those heroes that starts to fall off towards the mid game phase, but Valve's kind of fixed that by giving him a plus 75 damage talent or, yeah. you know, more return so damage. So his earlier well. talents were a choice between plus 2 mana regen or plus uh, X amount of damage, uh, which is kind of silly. X amount of damage at level 10 doesn't 60 damage or whatever. It's, it's okay, but it, it wasn't a huge game breaking talent. And then the choice between evasion and magic resistance used to come on in a little later. So they brought that earlier, earlier on into on, the yeah. game at level 10 itself. And okay, uh, that well, makes... Just rethinking its approach towards Salen. But here at the USAF League, nothing's changed. It's another game, it's another Medusa. <laughs> so now they've got that late game layer of security. They've got that four protect one lineup going. It's Five fairly straightforward. Remaining. They're gonna get their... I mean, the early priority should be on the Venomancer, keep him protected. The Bloodseeker is probably not gonna need too much support. There's gonna be a Spirit Breaker charging in from time to time. Um, if you can get the Veno those early levels to max out the Plague Wards, you'll be able to mount, mount a really strong push going your way. But after Mux, they're gonna just put their eggs into the Physical Deeps basket, picking up the Sven as their final pickup. We've seen this time and time again. The Sven can prove to be that turkey that's only getting fat for Thanksgiving. Um, if Sven finds himself out of position here, Medusa is one of the best heroes to punish him. Stone Gaze works fantastically versus the Sven. Given that it pierces spell immunity, even if he chooses to pick up a BKB, it's not going to do him too much good. Mm -hmm. It's a greedy lineup coming out from Akramux, um, but one that could prove to pay big dividends, given that uh, both the Sven and the Bristleback are very much capable of farming Ancients by themselves. Yeah. Um, you also got to... Okay, I, I think I have to quickly... Yeah, I think your game is fun. We're going to restart Dota real quick. But um, the other thing about Sven is that they've nerfed God Sven. It lasts only for 10 seconds at level 1. And um, if, if you just kite it for the duration by, say, a Spirit Breaker or even just a Rupture upon you, you're going to be wasting a lot um, of your... I mean, this... It, it's one of the earlier changes that just comes out in the patch notes. If um, you just drop a search Prepare of God's Sven, it does come up rather obviously. Uh, never mind, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We're going to load into the game anyway. Okay. But yeah, it, it, if that's the case, then it's fairly. Uh, it's going to be a fairly difficult task for. Uh, never mind, it's, his God's Sense still lasts for 25 seconds. Man. Okay, I was uh, mistaken. I mean, your, your source My is, bad. Your source is entirely wrong. My <laughs> source is entirely wrong. Someone probably read like the bonus strength of 10 and said, oh, it lasts only 10 seconds. But that's. that's, that's Okay, apologies. Bollocks. Apologies for the <laughs> And 25 seconds is a fair bit yeah, of time. Yeah, that is a lot of time. I, I was wondering, why would they reduce it to 10 seconds? You can it's barely... not like Sven's really nerf-worthy at this point. He's... I like that he's got the mana region talent at level 10 as well. I, I think On the that's, Sven? Yeah, I think that's the one you go for as opposed to the uh, plus, plus 8 strength. Plus 8 strength? When you want plus 8 strength? It's tempting, sure. But Sven, do you really want to be building... I don't know, picking up that extra bit of infused raindrops and such just for the mana region. Uh, yeah, I guess actually in hindsight it does make sense. Maybe if you're playing a support when you go with the plus two. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm gonna put my money on the Yodha's basket here. Yeah, I think they've got the better lineup. I okay. think uh, Medusa is a hell of a pick versus the Sven and even the Bristleback for that matter. The refusal or rather the minus 25 feedback damage from Yodha should work well versus the Medusa later on, but. That's really the only thing they've got going for them versus them. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm going to side with the Akramax here. Yeah. I, I, I think... Um, I, I obviously think that if this game goes on beyond the 40 minute mark, the Yoda should be the one taking this. But just in terms of team fight around the mid game, I think the Akramax have got this. Now, usually we don't... I'm going to hold my oh, thoughts here because... Lane. Make a nuisance of make believe. Make believe. He's uh, put the skill point into leap, uh, which means he won't be doing any of his shenanigans and just taking away the range creep from the Medusa early on, just pushing the wave. It's a bit unfortunate that Eleven didn't start off with the Orb of Venom because that could have uh, really put a dent into that Mirana, forcing her to even use that leap early on. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you know, normally I don't advocate the Bloodseeker with the Shadow Breaking, by the way, he's switching lanes now. Yeah. He doesn't want to deal with this offensive tri lane by himself. 
But this is one of those games where I think the early Shadow Blade into a Silver Edge would work wonders, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You need that Silver Edge versus the Bristle back. That's one of the best ways to deal with it. That's Hold the on, only I'm source dying. of blade. Talk to Fisher. He does have the Soul Rip. He's gonna heal up, but he got 11 with the charge and a pause at the worst possible time. Kale has disconnected. Okay, so this gives us time to get our bearings right. Kale did tag Kiko with the Venomous Kale, but Kiko's the only target that he tagged. Acme, he's stolen a good 12 strength from these heroes, so he's not dying here. Blue Frog should just give up on the chase right away. Their focus, their priority should be to keep Kiko and Grape alive for now, because 11 is already charged in. Problem is, there's no Orb of Venom on 11 and Grape hasn't been tagged by the Venom Scale, so that charge is going to only stun Grape for a while and send him back. I don't think we should be seeing a kill on this bottom lane unless, you know, 11 decides to stick around for longer than he needs to. That Fisher block might just work against him. Mm -hmm. now, if both teams play their hands right, nobody should die. Grape should probably just take a little bit of damage and walk <coughs> away. Kiko will just have to back up and pop a salve and yeah. the lane should reset naturally. On the other sides though, Shondi, he's come up top without uh, the magic stick. So Max has a small window where he can help, well, hope to zone out Shondi. Mm -hmm. While on the middle lane, Apps is sitting at about 2 and 1 CS versus Make Believe who's at 1 and 3. So it's, it's fairly even on the top in the middle lanes. The lane switch, we'll only see how it plays out now as Shondi's moved up top. But the real question is, are Yodas going to fight fire with fire? Are they going to go trial lane versus trial lane on the bottom lane? Or are they going to send someone up to help Shondi? I mean, everybody gets a free TP, so why not lane switch yourselves? You could, but you've also got to ask yourself the question, isn't the aggressive trial lane on the side, or isn't the trial lane on the side of Yoda stronger with a Venomancer and an Undying there? Right, I mean, okay, one lane, the charge comes through, Kale's reconnected, and uh, like you mentioned, Obi dies, Great takes a little bit of damage, Kiko eats a quick tango. Maybe, just maybe, if Kale had a level 2 here instead of Acme, they might have been able to do some serious damage. Okay. Even one point in the Poison Sink can prove quite a So they're actually switching lanes. Kiko has to storm hammer, but Sean D jumps into the two of Fishers there. They're trying to catch him down. Like, they managed to stun him with the storm hammer. They're running him down, and Kiko draws first blood. Good Musical play, lanes. I Musical think lanes it inspired. was that war crime movement speed that helped him out. Alright, so Shondi just TP'd up top, gets taken apart. That means this TP is on cooldown for another 20 seconds and he doesn't want to go back top yes. again. Um, by the time he reaches the bottom lane, I'm pretty sure Kiko is going to get a few more levels and if he wants, he can just buy another TP along with his allies yeah. and move bottom once again to zone out Shondi. I mean, are playing some good Dora. So you, I mean, you pretty much got to give the Bloodseeker lane and just babysit him now. Because whichever lane he walks into, he's going to walk in with a disadvantage. He's died once. He's um, lost a little bit of EXP, he's missed out on CS. Uh, heck, the Blizzleback has better CS. The Undying is as much, if not better CS than the Bloodseeker at this, point, at this point. So the, whichever lane the Bloodseeker goes to, he hits a lane with a disadvantage. And Max is, Max is the lane he decides to choose. Well, 11, back up top again. The uh, Space Cow, as we like to call him, is abusing the fact that he has more or less a free TP with that Charge of Darkness. He's also got the Arcane Rune picked up, so that Charge is back online in Jiffy. Mm -hmm. In case he wants to go mid, where Make Believe seems to be kind of struggling, but I want to say struggling because he's only out of consumables, but the bottle should be flying out to him now. Yeah, he's got the ball flying out. Uh-oh, Grape. He's out in no man's land here, and Acme knows this. Problem is, they don't really have lockdown, and Kale's too far to connect with the Venomous Gale. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, bottom, we've got 11 charging in once more. Sean Lee's giving chase as well, but this really isn't a kill. All they'll do is tag Kiko once and back away. Now, Blue Frog's looking for the Fisher block. Gets it perfectly. The Storm Hammer on to do, but where's the follow up? Great with the Frost Blast. They're trying to bring down Sean Lee. Another death on the Bloodseeker could be really costly at this point. Blue Frog just standing in his way, blocking him physically, but 11. Well, he's far superior with these body blocks and Acme comes in. A DK on to do. That's a lot of strength on the Undying. But Undying not working with too much mana. Another Frost Blast from Gabe. This could be the death of 11. And surely they'll bring down the Spirit Breaker. Acme trying to find a kill in response. Blue Frog still alive. But the final DK secures the kill. And Kale comes in with the Venomous Gale. Ensuring that Acme finds a double. Well, I mean, the idea was not bad. 
from Kiko and the boys. They did choose to go on uh, the Bloodseeker again, this musical lanes. They thought they'd make it work in their favor, but that's where the undying, yeah. standing around in the middle of the fight, stealing strength from the strength core. It, it's just all the stars aligning right now for uh, the side uh -huh. of Yodas. Mm -hmm. But what's crucial uh, for the Akramunks is that A, the Swen survived and B, the Bloodseeker died. That's what's really hurting Kiko in Kiko trouble again. tagged by the Venomous Gale, pops the Walker, I hope to run. It's going to be okay for the time being. Kale though, he did put two points into the Poison Sing now, so the magic damage is going to work wonders versus Kiko. That walk ride doesn't really mean much versus him. Yeah. Um, Agbank going in, the 11 from the back, he's got the charge out on Kiko, the Venomous Gale is there. And he spoke of the magic damage, they finally hurt the Sven a little bit. Grape comes in, he's got a Frost Blast, Blue Frog holding onto that Fisher. In fact, it's on cooldown, he's got a run and he might in fact be sent to his base. Kiko and Grape manage to bring down Acme while Eleven gets Blue Frog in response. But the tower, along with a couple of auto attacks, will ensure that Eleven falls as well. If you take a look at the fight recap, it's a two for two. But finally, it's a Sven being brought down. Yeah, and it's also a gold swing going in favour of the Raiden. While Shondi, though, top lane, taken out by Max, who's gone in deep, gets the solo kill and TP's out there like a boss. Shondi is just having a horrible game here. There's no sugar coating it. He's yeah. being chased down regardless of which lane he goes to. Why does Bristleback have two boots? I am confused. What am I looking at here? I'm looking at his feet. <laughs> yep, he's got two legs. Two boots for the dead. Anyway, 11 with the charge. They want to make up for the loss that Chandi's faced in the laning phase. They're trying to punish Kiko. They drop the tombstone and the immediate moonlight shadow means that they'll be forced to retreat. A soul rip onto the tombstone. They're just making life miserable here for Kiko. Did, I, I can't wrap my mind around this. Did he pick up someone else's boots? Uh, no. It doesn't look like it. It, 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 it is in someone else's boots. But look at this. Life is going to get worse for Shondi. Nice. Blue truck with the Fisher. Not ideal. Make believe. Misses the arrow. Doesn't commit this star storm. And 11 is here. This could be a kill if Shondi had a couple of levels. Maybe just the blood ride. 11 goes in. Not with the charge. Takes a frost blast. Make believe with the haste. And trying to just run in straight at them. Blue Frog, middle tower not the best for Fisher. But. Uh, yeah, they, they could have really capitalized a little bit better on that. And that's a rotation from make believe, which means that the Medusa is going to get a little bit of free time in the mid lane. Yeah, she's already on top of the net worth charts with the top CSing. Well, she's also the top CSing hero this game. Mm -hmm. Chip damage on the tier 1 it made. Things are going really well for apps. The problem that I've seen with apps on the core role, he has the propensity to throw. Okay. He's, uh, he's one of those players that... It comes across that he's really that he craves the limelight for the most part, and sometimes that works in his favor because he makes flashy plays. But uh, there's a fine line between making a flashy play and looking like a fool. And every now and then he's on the other side of that line. Mm -hmm. And if you do that with a Medusa, as who's the hero that's technically a one position for this game, the repercussions could be huge. Dyer's I'm middle tower is under starting pressure. to like. Uh, what the others are doing right now, they've realized that they have to run their trial lane, no matter which lane it is. They need the Venomancer along with the Undying, maybe even the Spirit Breaker, possibly all together. But um, yeah, for now, for now they sort of split up. The, they've switched lanes, and Go the lane composition it. seems to be a Bloodseeker with an Undying and a Spirit Breaker babysit again. So they're not getting the ideal aggression that they'd be hoping for from these heroes. They're kind of being forced to play defensive, which means that Blue Frog is just going to rotate to the top lane and try and find a kill on the Venomancer. So 11 with the charge, make believe going in. Acme dropping low, he does have the soul rip. Make believe with the double damage. How many leap charges does he have? He has one more, so he could chase down 11. The arrow comes right through. 11 gets smacked right in the forehead, and the Star Storm is there. Make believe scores a double, brings down the Undying, brings down the Spirit Breaker, but he might be losing his tier one as apps. He sees this What's as an opportunity this? to apply Dyer some pressure. Well, that, that double kill is really crucial because that puts Make Believe right back into this game. He was losing the laning stage quite hard, but those two kills now put him closer to the Medusa's net worth. He's still third on the board with the Venomancer and the Medusa taking the lead over him, but it's some sort of recovery. It's some semblance of hope coming out. Abs is still having a few days though. I mean, he tanks up all of that damage with the Mana Shield and then just gets his mana back with that Mystic Snake. Middle lane though, that charge from 11 looked a bit 
too uh, risky for my liking. Pico did pop the godsend. I think he was clearing up a stacked camp of neutrals on the top side of the map here. His godsend's worn off. Acme, he's walked into no man's land. He's got the storm ammo. Blue Frog with the fish of the enchant totem. Well, he's not they close enough, turn. but Kiko is just hurting a fair bit. Kale is nearby and Kale is level 7. He's not put a point into the poison Nova just yet, but with 11 charging in, they could go for the kill. Blue Frog charge upon him, one fisher available, that's about it. The rupture committed, the blood drive on the floor, this should be a kill. He gets the fisher out, so he's buying himself some time. Grape doesn't have the chain frost, but look at this. Kale, the poison Nova, the venomous Gale, and with the tombstone, Kiko surely will be going down. Max is dropping low as well, Kale scores a double, and John Lee is running around, struck by the blood first. It's a double kill for Kale, and possibly a tier one tower. And that's the power of the lineup. Really? It's all coming together here. There it is, man. That's, that's what we were looking forward to. The mid game, we knew that this, this is a ticking time bomb really happen. And as soon as Kale gets that venomous game, oh, sorry, the poison nova online, they just group up as five and makes up. Well, group up as four and make something happen. Four protect one Dota at his finest. They make enough space for apps to go farming on the bottom side without fear of being brought down. And guess what? There's a nice cherry on the top waiting for him as well because he's going to get that bonus goal from the tower going down on the top lane. Okay, for some of our newer viewers who have only started watching Dota after say DI4, DI5, what is exact? What exactly is Four Protect One? So you pick a one position hero who's your hard carry, a hero that in this case is Medusa. In this case, it's Medusa, a hero that doesn't really bring much to the table early on in the game. Okay. But if you manage to give her time and space to kill creeps and get levels and gold. She comes online later and does a lot for you. So, okay. four heroes protect this one hero till she can carry the game for those four right. heroes later on. She's just buying space and time for the Medusa to farm. That's about it. And hopefully then she has impact and Draw she's too much of an issue for the opponents down. to it's, deal with. It's kind of like in a game of cricket where you have a batsman who's on a hot streak and then his partner essentially just plays. He gives him, <laughs> he, he gives him the strike yeah, as often as he can. Strike. Hmm. Max is going for the prime guard. Won't last long. Uh, I mean, I don't mind it, but he needs the hood ASAP on the pistol back. Dyer's bottom tower yeah, is under attack. I still don't know why he has two boots in his inventory, man. Is this a bug or is he actually walking around with one boot for each of his legs? Dyer's bottom tower is I about to fly. Bottom Dyer's tower Dyer's has fallen. I mean, it's adding no value, to man. Ask, Even if you've made a mistake and picked them up, you might as well just sell off one of them. There you go. There we go. Okay, he sold them off. 11 minutes and he sold them. Bottom lane, 11 is coming, charging in. Kale as well as Shondi are nearby. 11 goes in, connects with Kiko. He hasn't got the nether strike yet. He's only level 4 to have minutes in. But the rupture is there along with the blood drive. Kiko just man fighting like a boss. But the control is there with the bash. However, Blue Frog with the Fisher gets the kill. Once again, another Venom is Gale and the Poison Nova committed. They managed to bring down the sweat. The Echo Slam was there, but an Echo Slam just by itself is not enough. Max takes down the Tombstone. There is is no shrine, Blue Frog. What are you running to? The arrow comes sailing through, make believe, leaves forward, gets the star off, should get Kale and should get his dominating streak. Moves off for more. There's a blood ride on the floor. Make believe gets silence. He doesn't have any more leap charges. Does have an arrow coming off cooldown. Turns towards the neutral and turns back towards Acme. Arrow in the dark, fishing, not connecting. But look at this though. You've got Sean Lee who's Dyer's back up and ready to fight. He's got this first is charge. 11 is still chasing Max. He's gone next to a tier 2. He's going to get punished for this because Kiko's here with God Strength. Dishes out the Storm Dyer's Hammer. 11 notices that minus the Storm Hammer, the there's a lack of lockdown, but there's not a lack of physical damage. And Kiko just punishes 11 for that greedy drive. On the Dyer's bright side, though, space was created. Dyer's his app said, all right, you guys do attack. you. I'm going to go farm and help you guys come back later in this game. He's almost taken down a tier 2 tower in the top lane by himself. He's still right on top of the net for a chart, 6,200 gold. And everything that Octavox are doing right now is to deal with four heroes on the side of Yodhas. They haven't even seen this Medusa's final form yet. Mm -hmm. Dyer's top tower is about to take the plunge. But Apps, he's being a little careless here. They've got him out. They're surely going to block oh. him in the picture. They missed time the arrow. Make that he was relying on Blue Frog, and Blue Frog waited a second to once to get the perfect block. But great. Ruthless with the chain force gets that kill. Apps is, yeah, he's disrespected his opponents and he's been punished for it in a bad, bad way. The point of a pro four protect one is to literally protect one. If the if the one goes out there and walks up to the tier two tower, doesn't back out when everyone goes missing. Yeah, that's a mistake on your part. Apps. I mean, he backed out, but he, what? They're not going to come back into their own jungle when they all respawn. Yeah, that was silly.
Max, he's got the vanguard, he's uh, building onto the hood. Um, 9-11 is the score, it's only a thousand net worth deficit between both these sides. Uh, but what's uh, crucial is uh, that the Medusa is doing rather well for herself. Arrow comes sailing through, it's not going to connect. Kales is doing a whole lot of damage with the veil and he's chasing them back to their own shrine. 11 comes charging through, no respect at all. And he should get the kill on the Earth Shaker. But the question is, does he get out of here? There's a plot light on the floor. Once more, the Poison Nova unleashed. 11 dropping low. Grape will get the kill. Make believe, being controlled. Kales goes to double. Grape tagged by the Poison Sting as well as the Poison Nova, if I'm not mistaken. No, just the poison thing, and he's not got detection. Grape seems like he's gonna survive strongly though. He's juking out, juking it out in the middle of Pico. Pico gets off the storm hammer. He's still working with that god strength. And when Max in the vicinity, this should be a kill. Shondi does have a TP, he should be looking to TP, but the physical damage is just too much. And one more quill spray will secure the kill. While once again, Aps is just farming. So quick recap of what happened there. Somewhere in the fray, the courier died, and it died with Shondi's Midas. Okay. First of all, I, I don't get why Shanti is going for the Midas this game as the Bloodseeker. This is an ideal game for him to be picking up the Blade Mail first and then building towards the Shadow Blade. This isn't a game where he goes Midas and just hopes that the game goes late. Mid lane though, looks like yeah. uh, Acme is in a bit of a pick though. His make believe can commit the lead charges where he's thinking about it down. but decides against it. I mean, he's got two charges. Uh, they are sapping away his strength with that DK. 11 comes charging it, but how far does 11 want to go? Blue Frog oh, in the no. vicinity. The Fisher not ideal. Make believe searching for the arrow, throws it out. 11 oh. gets caught by the Echo Slam. It doesn't do too much in damage anymore and it's still not enough to bring down 11 now make believe commits the lead confident that the bloodseeker is nowhere close by and he scores a kill well it was a fairly heavy commitment for just the spirit breaker three deep charges as well as an echo yeah that seems like a bit of overkill especially with all five heroes basically well four heroes sitting beyond the middle lane Max moves himself bottom where Apps was just busy taking down a tier 2 tower so he's just clearing the field of whatever buildings they have Just the a tier 2 left in the middle mine. lane now, by the way. So the pretty much all their outer towers are down. Yeah, they... How could they have dealt with this differently? By just leaving the Bristleback to lane against the Medusa and not come in fights? You think... I don't, I don't think the Bristleback can deal with the Medusa there, to okay. be honest. Because Medusa's just got to sap away his mana, and then in that case, she can free farm while he tries to free farm in the base as well. I think it's a lot more devastating having a free farm Medusa. The play should have been to try and go for uh, the Medusa time and again. In the lane? In the lane itself, yeah. We are, we're yet to see a smoke tank or an impactful Moonlight Shadow offensive rotation coming out from the side of uh, Akramux. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could be the game changer if they can find a Medusa isolated with no is protection behind her. Looks like that's what they want to do. They're grouping up near the, where the old shrine used to be. I mean, there's a Radiant Observer on the floor, so they're spotting pretty much but all of this. There's no smokes. There's absolutely no smokes on the side of Akramux right now. Yeah, Grape, he, he's got a smoke uh, at uh, at the shop in his stash. Yeah, I, it seems as if they're going to group up soon enough to smoke. Has Kiko picked up any crucial items? What has he got? Kale has uh, the veil. Um, make me leave company, Asha. What's most important is that the pipe is going to be complete on Max, and that will be the tool that they need to turn the tides of battle, right? We've seen how impactful yes, that venomous, uh, sorry, that poison nova has been in the last few fights. Yeah, if they can buy themselves or rather shave off some of the damage from the poison nova in the middle of the team fights, that will work wonders for them. Max, though, could he be in trouble here? But it seems like he's a bit isolated. He goes to tag him the game. It's gonna be a mistake snake as well. It doesn't quite connect on him. You can see Ak may come again. The strength steel would work versus him, but the moonlight shadow. Uh, they, they spotted this out. Have the Yoda got detection? This dust on Acme, they've got the scan. If they want, they could use it just to scout out the position of uh, the Akramux. He bought in the mid lane. 11 goes in with the charge. He's had enough. He's jumped right on top of Blade. A storm hammer to stop the spirit breaker. The tombstone committed. The Fisher's there from Blue Frog. Blue Frog doesn't have a blink. And, uh, well, the lack of lockdown without the Spirit Breaker means that the Aftermunks can just back off for the time being. Great disengage coming out from Aftermunks. Fantastic Fisher from Blue Frog while the rest of his teammates just bailed. That looked like it could have been a fight that went straight up in favour of Yodas. The Tombstone was positioned perfectly. The Mystic Snake tagged three heroes. You had a Spirit Breaker on the other side of the Fisher as well. However, that Fisher really put a stop to all of that. That buys them another couple of minutes to go farming. That Tombstone with its absurdly long cooldown. 
it's it's this is the way that they're gonna come back into this game. Just get enough levels, get your early items, get that feedback talent online for the Mirana, and then you have a way to deal with that uh, Medusa. Mm -hmm. The problem is Medusa is itemized fairly intelligently. Apps knows that he's more likely to just be farming away on the side lane than in the jungle, which is why he chose to finish the Maelstrom first, and then he's gonna come back for the Lincoln Spear. This okay. significantly accelerates his farm rate and makes him an even bigger threat as they approach the late game phase now. And it seems as if the Yodas have popped the smoke of their own. 11th probably going to be leading the way right now. I mean, they saw the Mirana for a bit. They Radiant's see Max in the mid lane, but it's Kiko like that they want. Can come down, does not the clip. There's Krog, and he's nowhere close to his Blink Dagger. They're just running up the cliff. Kiko farming the ancients. They've read him like a book. The charge is there. Kiko should be controlled. The chain cross could have pushed them back a bit. The Fisher to block them off. 11 on the wrong side of it, and Kiko will just turn and bring him down. The arrow is a white ball at best. Kill unloads the poison. No one attacks a couple. The echo slap from Blue Frog in Shows that kill will fall while Acme tries to bring down Swen and indeed he will. Max giving chase gets the kill and now it's Abs by himself. The four aren't there to protect the one and the one by himself is not big enough. Grape on a killing spree. Uh, Shandi though, he chose not to come to that fight at all. I mean, this is such a disconnect within the uh, Yoda's ranks. Yeah. The point is, if it's a four protect one, your Bloodseeker may be elsewhere, but he gets that first movement speed as the fight progresses. Yeah. Why on earth is he split pushing with a blade mail and a Midas? That makes no sense in any universe. He should have been running towards that fight to join his teammates. Yeah. They spent so much time trying to bring down that Sven in that battle that Blue Frog managed to position for a nice fissure where he had the Sven on the high ground and everyone else on the low ground. That allowed them allowed the rest of his teammates to come in from behind and cause I mean, all sorts now of Now Shanti's trying to make up. Not gonna be enough. That's a uh, tanky as hell bristle back. So what's not gonna die so easily. Why, why sim is that? Okay, you're the blood taker. You've decided to split first, but you had more than enough time. You also had a shrine in the vicinity. All you had to do was hold on to a TP, TP to the shrine, and come clean up. That that's a lot more farm mm, than you trying treasures. to farm some creeps. Really, I I, I mean. It's such questionable stuff coming out from Sean B. Going straight for the Midas first of all. Then he gets the blade mill and chooses not to fight. Goes farming creeps instead. <laughs> it seems pointless. Counterproductive at Do you best. like the face boot pickup on the blood sticker? Not entirely, man. Treads is possibly the way to is honestly the way to go in this game. It's not like you can face boots over a freaking fissure, which is the only thing that's blocking him in this game. And now he's queuing up a radiance. It's great. Where's that silver edge that he needs so desperately versus the Bristleback? Yeah, this is one of the games where one would advocate the Shadow Blade on uh, the Bloodseeker. Yeah, yes. I, I, I mean, we talked about this right at the start. We don't really like the Shadow Blade on the Bloodseeker, but this is the game where it's an absolute must. Yeah, if, if there was a game, this is it. Well, looking over at uh, Make Believe, he's going for that uh, Lincoln Spear now, by the way. So that Yasha is just a casual Yasha, which is not going to convert into a Manta style just yet. But instead, he's going to go for the Lincolns to deal with the Rupture and possibly the Charge. Manta's not bad, by the way. As of uh, the 7.07 .07 patch, when the scale can be dispelled. Yeah, so when the Manta scale should can be, uh, be an item that he looks for later on. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't be against him even getting a Diffusal after all of that, just for that extra feedback burn versus that uh, Medusa. Yep. We've seen that they have ways to deal with the Medusa right now. She's not immortal to say the least. And 11 is charged as well. They may be looking to start the fights on their terms. Radiant's bottom a tower big faces start. a stiff win. The big winner of all of this is the Blue Frog. Right? Yeah. Radiant uh, fortification uh, to save them is about to take the blood. Not finding the favorite for Almost blocked up the bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's middle 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 tower is under attack. Dyer's 
safety but KLC are going to know when it is KL. All of that thrown but without the blood seeker do they have enough. The two stone being focused. Kiko manages to bring it down but then what not? He'll bring down Acme while Blue Frog is trying his best to control the Venomancer. And with the fish and the intern order they'll bring him down as well. There's a buyback from Sean Lee's blood seeker there. The most pointless buyback I've seen of this game. I, I, I don't think that was the way to go for him. He just he was inching closer and closer towards his Radiance. He should have just considered uh, sticking around and, and going back to farm once he respawned. Now he's going into the jungle with a goal penalty and it's just such, such questionable stuff coming up. I mean, what was that guy that? I... Buy back at the 24 minute mark, I think, for This is ending with a break. I mean, you could see the desperation in Kale's eyes in that fight. He chose to go for that Sven so hard. He ended up sacrificing everything just to get that one kill. Sven's okay with dying off phase down his bit. He's, he's also to go for a mask of madness as well as the uh, Echo Saber in addition to the Blink Dagger. So his job is to jump in and decimate at least one hero before he moves on. If the Venomancer kills him after that, so be it. The Bristleback is going to get in position to do damage. And we've got to remember, all of that was after an entirely whiff so Echo G, Slam from Blue Frog in the middle lane. He got game practically no one. Uh, did you see the last two games? All the last two games. Oh, so that this time he's got Acme though. The Fisher is perfect. The Enchanter is there. The Arrow is in the middle. The Enchanter 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 is in That is just the perfect spot for an arrow in that goes down. Blue 
Take a bow, my friend. You have to be out of your mind. This beautiful. Up into the enemy cliff. With no vision at all. No, yeah, the man white. Wow. Yeah. Bottom tower is under attack. Vision and no vision. That's exactly what you needed to do. And ensure the killing would be supposed to make believe at all. We've talked about how crucial it is to get those towers in a push base lineup, but I think Bloodseeker not participating in that one fight pretty much cost them a lot. I think a that lot of what the Bloodseeker has done has cost them. A lot of what the Bloodseeker has done has cost them. So, I mean, I don't want to be pointing fingers at just Sean Lee because after all, there were a couple of key mistakes coming out from a lot of others as well. I mean, Eleven charging in uh, without paying heed to what's around him as well. And some really good fights taken by after this. But back to the point, Sean Lee with the Midas, can't have just to a 4 protect one strategy. Sean Lee with the blade mail after the choosing not to come to a fight, another crucial mistake being made there. And Sean Lee would be a good time to play out that sort of aftermath because they're doing so well. Sean Lee will only find out the conclusion of this game. However, he does have a shot and he does have a shot and he does have a shot. Yeah, I think Kane has picked up his BKB as well. Um, I'm not sure if the aftermath has Sean Lee leads to BKB. <laughs> and they could be in for a nasty surprise, and that's when you're looking for the Sven as well as the Bristleback uh, to be the primary source of uh, damage in the team fights. The way for them to come back into this now would be a good time to go back on the aftermath because they're moving towards a team. Not careful about your weapon. That's awful. Don't get the same. The conclusion of this is we find out after the first break only on the team. Woo! They did a baby turn to stone. I mean, it, it's mainly just the second one. So, yes. Two shots, long as they can be. Team up and bring them down. Like Kiko just soloed him. Kiko just ran up to him, smacked him in the face and killed him off by himself. I think every player just wins to have bragging rights and scream a little bit on stage. <laughs> but yeah, for, for those of you not uh, getting access to the main stage, I just hear someone scream, Dota will <laughs> play? That's a tier 2 tower that's going to go down on the top side of the map. A tier 2 that could go down on the bottom They're side because it's going to be spent as well. Yeah. Make and believe is definitely going to get it. Kiko might just get it with the C3. Uh -oh. Four um, star, the double suns come out, and where's the arrow? Radiant's he hasn't been fired off the ball, he's lost! Wind. Blue frog, what are you doing, man? The arrow connects on Acme, and Max is going to go in with the Radiant. He's going to do a whole lot of damage. Acme hasn't managed to see any strength with the DK. He drops the team from the Fishers down to Kane, who's holding onto his DKB, pops it to run. And Kiko. Kiko's just, yeah, he's pushed the bottom lane all the while. The God Strength is coming back in 14. He still has an Aegis and a BKB to work with. And suddenly the tower scores have been leveled as well. But they're not done. They want to go through the bottom lane. Look at Kiko, prepped and ready to jump in. Max will be the one to go on the front lines. Kiko, ready to jump in with the follow up. He thinks forward instead of black backwards to dodge uh, the blood right. He popped the God Strength in the fight coming up. Hold down the arrow. Narrowly misses on Kale. I've got the eye armor. I mean, they're not too worried about the damage of the tower. He just popped the BKB, focusing on the many barracks. You see and die. Sean Lee pops the BKB of his own, a rupture upon the BKB. He can miss the poison Nova, but Kale will fall. Axe brings him down. The chain comes to mid it as well. Eleven goes in. He's trying to control Grave, but look at that. Max with the damage. Big Billy chipping in as well. And Kiko. Still alive to his all. Finally goes down to Sean Lee. Acme as well as Abs trying to see how they are Abs running into the stone gate. They managed to catch Blade and they will bring him down. Max dropping low, but here's Blue Frog. It's an angle slam onto two, but there's no follow up damage. Sean Lee is on the hunt. He smells blood. Max trying to TP out. Max barely gets the hell out of there. That cost a couple of buybacks, if I'm Watch not mistaken. Watch for the arrow turn around. If Sean Lee gets tagged with the arrow, he can go down. The arrow connects the top and starts the But the blade mail! The blade mail gives it up for Sean Lee. And finally, that item is proving to pay dividends. That was an inner barracks taken away by Kiko and the boys. Well, just one melee barracks taken away, but an almost near team wipe coming out 
on the side of Yodas. They bring down almost everyone on the, on the other side. It did cost them a buyback on the Spirit Breaker, but that's something that they're totally okay to expend. A reckless bit of push coming out there from Pico, I have to say. He expended the Aegis, BKB and Gulf Strength to take down the melee barrack. When he came back, he was nothing but a sitting duck. Mm -hmm. Mid lane, they're trying to bring down the Bristol back. They tag him with a rupture, they commit the blood right. Max just standing his ground. Chondi forced the bubble to the and run. Max runs forward with the rupture upon him. They come to the rescue with the chain frost. Kale is here as well. A glimmer cape upon the Bristol back, but they have vision thanks to the third. And Chondi brings him down. No one falls just yet on the side of the earth. Does. And once again, they managed to deal with this Bristol back. No bristle for 70. They could take down this last tier 2 tower and maybe even force out a buyback from the bristle back soon. Chandi, he did shrine up so he can come back to join this party, but ah, I, I can't agree with Yoda's backing away here. They should consider taking this fight. Yeah, they, they should be looking to take another fight, possibly 11 getting bigger targets. But yeah, they're just trying to um, recompose themselves, gain some. Uh, Inside as to what exactly is going on in this match. They were the ones working with a huge lead early on. Suddenly it swung back towards the Akramaks after they picked up Aegis in the lane of Melly Barrack. They sense that they have what it takes to take down the Akramaks, but they're not sure what that is. I think putting Rupture on the Bristol Axe seems to work. Max also running around with Rupture upon him is a bit idiotic. Yeah. He just ran towards Shondi so right now. With Max the actually started that fight with the Mason Goose, but. A bristle bag chasing a blood seeker seems absolutely pointless to me. There was no follow up coming in. We didn't have blue frog peeping in in the nick of time and such, and that basically ended up with Max himself dying. But uh, unfortunately, the Yodas didn't quite capitalize on that. They should have taken tier two at the very least. They didn't even get that, and they didn't force out a buyback from the bristle bag either. They did manage to stem the bleeding on the side of Akramax. The problem is that Medusa is starting to get huge. She's picked up a full Hurricane Pike, has the money, well, almost has the money for a full BKB next. And uh, the Maelstrom's already doing work at helping her get this gold racking up. She chose to go for the plus 800 mana talent. I think this is where she chooses to pick uh, either the plus 7 split shot or the split shot using yes. modifiers. I don't really see room for this modifier item, so maybe just go for the extra split shot down it's here. Oh, look Down. at this. Kale. Probably BKB. Rukas just uh, testing the waters then. Bottom lane as well. You've got Abs just split pushing as best as he can, but not getting him anything done just yet. While the Akramux did find a fair bit of momentum, I think they need to find their bearings again and make something happen because. You're fighting into a Medusa and a Bloodseeker in this late game stage, which is never a healthy fight. More tanky as well. This is uh so just I don't know if you noticed this, but Eleven just saw the enemy courier go past him with a Lincoln Spear upon it. He instead chose to go and plant the ward. Oh, but that probably means he knows that the smoke is happening. They popped up counter smoke of the road as well. Yeah, they definitely know what's going on. Smoke, uh, not going to find any target here. Those scans also not going to find anyone. Eleven's just playing it deep inside his trees, hoping that he's going to be safe. Okay, Pico oh. smoke dispels. Pico okay. knows what's going on. Eleven comes right out. Blue frog nearby. Blue frog, did you oh, see him? No, what didn't. is going on? Eleven has juked them. Next level space creation. Ships in the night. He's just, he's dodged a bullet there and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> he's going to charge back through the bottom lane to say, ha, ah, this is where I was, fools. I mean, Blue Frog's keeping back. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. Blue Frog nearly I'm catches him, but they're just going to move back to the Roshan should be up. He's respawning in a couple of seconds. Uh, they can fall back and go to the Roshan. Mm -hmm. Chandi is the one who's actually oh, moving towards the pit. So Max is choosing to go for the Octarine core up next. So as if he wasn't tanky enough already. Acme is playing the rat style of Dora. The bottom lane for them is fortunately going to continuously push out because they've lost the melee barracks there. Mm -hmm. um, they need to ensure that the middle and the top lanes are always pushed. So that uh, Yodas can possibly punish if at all the uh, Octobox set group up as 5 and push. That's the game plan here and that's really what the most teams seem to be falling back on when they're in trouble times. Split push, push out Welcome to the lane and, and punish if uh, team, team gets desperate and moves to a single lane. 
Let's make Grief go for next. Looks like it is going to be the Mantis style after yeah. all. 60 corner, 40 corner. It does feel like they're starting to cap out in terms of damage. Because you've got to be offensive, I didn't pick up from, from Sven in the form of that uh, Lincoln Spear. However, the big man himself is back online and we're shot. He's going down short. Kiko and Max are getting it. Yeah, no contest coming out uh, in the year doesn't matter. I'm not sure if Eleven knows about this. He is nearby. It's likely that he can get the boost from Zen. It's an opportunity for Fisher. He's starting to be used. The enchanter to follow. Tom Hammer for the Eleven will get the charge up. He's in control. He's been dropped out. Make the boost from the hill. 56 seconds without the Spirit Breaker. A tier 2 in the middle lane. Sven moves to the top half of the map. He's the one holding on to the lead. I mean, I guess they're just going to wait for the god strength. I guess he's confident that his team can take down the game from the main side. This is the point in time when, when you want to fight mid. I think the Radiant should pop a smoke in the middle of the spirit. This is when you want to fight mid. Shandi goes in. He manages to pull Grape Oh, that arrow. But Grape with the Glimmer Cape still walking with the Rub Cape. Can't in the zone TP and Shandi. Thank you very much. Pops the TP for a Lich though. And this is something that could come back to hurt him. Max is just running in. So Did I miss back. something or does Bloodrite now cancel TP? No, it doesn't. Tower Grave canceled his own TP. Cancel his own TP. And yeah. I'm not sure why the Spirit Breaker wasn't there. He could have actually TP'd out, but he cancelled his own TP. Strange. Either way, make believe, along with the rest of the team, is going to pick Wait, up the tier yeah. in the mid lane. I would really like yeah. to hold on. Oh, sorry. hold on to high ground. Don't look for the fight anymore. Yeah, you probably do have to hold on to high ground. It's not like they don't have firepower, don't though, right? I, mean, I, I know that. Weak. And Bloodseekers also picked up that assault for us. So you can get a lot of the physical damage coming up from the Sven and the Bristleback and the Mirana for that matter are now going to be negated. No, no, no. Keep watching Dota. And I hope you guys get the last five points. That's an item choice I can completely points. get behind. So he's kind of redeemed himself with an assault pickup. Hmm, Kiko. Bottom lane. I mean, he's got the link in, but he still needs to be careful of the charge just popping it and the rupture to follow. Invisibility! TP is in his backpack, so he doesn't have instant access to that as well if he hopes to escape. Uh, Invis rune on make believe. Maybe now would be a good time uh, for the Akramons the to pop the uh, Moonlight right Shadow and possibly Akramons smoke and lure through and the bottom half of the map. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but they are walking around here. with the cheese so still on the game is final back, so that's definitely that one possibility. He's also got the octane completed. And he is a super tough cookie to crack. I'm kind of surprised he didn't go for the Crimson Guard this game. Seemed like it would have added some value versus the Medusa and that Bloodseeker, but yeah, given that a lot of this is magic damage, it doesn't make that much sense. They get triggered, blood right on the floor, not uh, too much damage being dished out by any of the Radiant heroes so far. Gale's thinking of going in on the front lines to make something happen, but Bristle, he he's just showing them his booty and beating up on the tower with the Mirana helping out from the bottom side of the map. Yeah, I mean, they get the tier 3, Gale, he has keys, he has a whole lot of region. He can just group up and go once again. Really if anything, the onus is on the Yoda to get the fight started. But really, how was the question? That was such a comfortable takedown on the tier 3. The wards weren't placed by the Venomancer, so they walked in, took it out and walked away. And now they're just going to wait and commandeer the high ground, deep warding as they go. One good initiation here from Blue Frog might just spell doom for them, or an arrow that could catch someone. Mm -hmm. A stray arrow that tags a core, and I, I think that's it. Who's got buyback on their side? Well, okay, they're fairly secure. They have buybacks on everyone except for the Lich and the Spirit Breaker this game. Oh, they've gone in on Ash. The Lincoln oh, triggered jubated. by the Storm Hammer. Ash just pops his VKB, and once again, that no is lockdown. how it's done. That's how it's done. Akramax. We talked about how teams have been struggling to breach high ground. You you fake them out. You you basically play them a fake card and you bait out a BKB. Now apps without a BKB is a sitting duck. Rufa wants to go in. Kiko goes in. Storm hammer under the Medusa blood right on the floor. They could go right back. Max is keeping Kale busy through all of this. And Kale pops his hurricane punch, meaning he's lacking maneuverability in these fights. Apps just goes in with the stone gaze and once again they're just gonna run. Max hangs around though. He's got the cheese, he's got the offering, he's oh, around the tanky. Kale though, controlled by the chain shot, forced to pop his own BKB, drops down the boys, you know what? Dust tag a couple of them. Max still has the cheese while Kiko's pounding away on apps. The Fisher a second too late. But Max and Kiko, they're focusing the racks. Make believe though, he's standing in the blood right. Needs to respect that. Abs though, needs to respect the Fisher as well as the damage coming out from the rest of them. 
Max is chasing them down. Blue Frog with the echo slam of them all. He manages to ensure that Max goes a triple with one single will spray. They're controlling the bristle back, so they buy back by the plenty. They'll get the kill on Blue Frog, but they've lost their barracks. And Shondi is trying to kill Make Believe. One more attack might have been enough, but Make Believe just TP it out of his face. No spirit breaker, no lockdown, and now it's Kiko being hunted down. He's got the ages. Oh, and he got a haste too. Yeah, he, he's okay. Grape gets out as well. That's, that's a win. Yeah, that's a major victory coming out for the side of Akramux. They force out two buybacks. They get a lane of barracks. They end up getting a whole bunch of kills, and they retreat with two out of three cores. Yeah, and you've got to give up buybacks. something. You've got to give up something to get racks if, uh, up against a Medusa lineup that's going to buy yeah. back in your face. Mm -hmm. And this is as good as, as it's going to get for them. The best part of it all, they still have the Aegis on Kiko. See, that regen kicked in and is now back up to full HP, if at all they want to fight again. I think Max did consume his cheese. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And he soaked up a lot before he consumed it. It was totally worth it. Mm -hmm. One Crimson Guard on him and he's basically nigh unkillable. Heck, you put a Blade Mail on him. Yeah, I was just, just wondering, do you him. think he goes for the Blade Mail? No, I think you just go raw tank. Keep tank potential right okay. now. He's queuing off an A on this for himself, okay? Okay, so that nullifies burst damage. I mean, isn't that how it works? 80% of... Not too sure though, because actually he's hanging around the mid lane. Yeah, so I mean, if you fall below 80%, a strong dispel is applied on you and you get a 2.5 second buff that causes all damage you deal and are dealt to be reduced to zero. So you can't do anything in those... Uh, you basically can't do damage, but you can't take damage either in those two seconds. But no one's really gonna burst him at this point. Yes, yeah, so then why build the air on this? It's burst damage, right? Yeah. It's like a stronger Infuse Ranger that also doesn't let you attack. But technically, it's just, it, it's not like a single piece of damage has to do uh, uh, it's not like a single hit has to do 80 percent damage yeah. from the spell to kick in so as long as you fall below 80 percent damage yeah but then then i mean it's to keep you alive from heroes that burst you down right when yeah. once you're below 80 percent you won't lose that 20 percent over the next two seconds that's that's what it's going to protect Which seems i like mean like a counterproductive item for, the for, the, for this lineup I think for the Bristleback in general, because the way with the Bristleback just got an Octarine and the spell Life Seal talent coming in, you probably even when you're on low HP, you want to be spamming on those quill sprays and showing your back to your opponents, right? And if your if your quill sprays are going to do zero damage, you're not going to Life Seal anything as well. Right. I'm not. I sure. think it'd be a good item on the Husker. Fall I below mean, eighty percent, not take damage for two seconds. But you don't deal damage either, so. Again, okay. you're essentially disabling, you're disarming yourself. Look at this, 11, I don't know what he was thinking. The oh, arrow, secondary arrow wave. as well, flying out. But the Fisher was there, they should be able to bring down 11. They pop Make Believe's Lincoln Spear and they drop the rupture upon him. Make Believe has no choice but to man up and fight. They pop their BKB, meaning Blue Frog can't find the opening. Max controlled with the Stone Gaze. They're bringing down these scores. Look for that Echo Slap. Where is it? There it is. It was underwhelming at best. But Grape still manages to bring down Kale with the Ice Brush. And Blue Frog will manage to take down Chandi. Here comes 11. Charge upon Sven. They manage to bring down the Sven. It's Max versus the world versus a whole lot of zombies. He's not going to go down anytime soon. And he decides, heck, I might as well bring down this tombstone. I mean, rule number one versus the Undying. You break the tombstone okay. first. They're and then going go in again. The Fisher is going to ensure the death on 11. Max is still manning up. He scores a double. This is a buyback on Chandi. And his buyback just resulted on a kill onto the Earth Shaker. And once again, that uh, tombstone that spawns upon death w was dealt with by Max. Okay, that was a bit of a haphazard fight. Uh, very rookie mistake coming out from Akramux, not focusing the tombstone when it was just lying there next to the Rosh Pit. There was a freaking zombie apocalypse next to the Rosh Pit right there and no one bothered to deal with it. The Sven couldn't get to the tombstone because he was so slowed by the zombies attacking him. Eleven saw that as an opportunity to charge and finish him off. That fight would have been significantly easier for Akramux if only someone took the time out to go right-click that bloody tombstone. Hmm. But it just goes to show you, man, the Undying is still a potent threat this late into the game. You cannot ignore him, you cannot ignore his spells. Now, Max, he's uh, going to go one versus one versus this Bloodseeker. 
takes a rupture and a lot of pure damage to go along with it as the blood ride hits him in the back Radiance as well. He's waiting. Holding his ground. The gamer came upon him. The rupture's timed out. And Shawnee, he's the one in trouble. A quick hurricane fight from Kale might just keep him alive a little while longer, but Max. He's forced out of BKB. The chain frost doesn't do too much. Eleven goes in with the nether strike but gets punished. Make believe with the diffuser blade. The arrows that split into yes. three. Still not enough to bring down Eleven. Instead, they're going for the bigger objective. The tier three tower. They do not have the spend though. He's just about to join them. He's somewhere near the Rosh pit. And heck, Roshan three spawn. Yeah, Roshan's actually been up for a while now. But they chose to go for the middle lane tier 3 instead. They do some chip damage, they force out a fortification. It's not too shabby, honestly. They'll be able to get themselves an Aegis and come back knowing that there's no fortify for their building. Smoke time and it is a desperation smoke. It's one that is absolutely necessary as well. Unfortunately, it's a dad bit too late. They're not going to make it into the pit in time. That Aegis and Cheese are going to be claimed as well. If, if they lose this fight, it's going to be they, are they going to go in? Yeah. Sure. The question. Gale wants to go in. He's got the Mjolnir buff on him. Max being controlled by the charge, but when it is Gale as well as the poison Nova does a fair bit. Great dropping low has to unload the chain cross. Max control fought down by Sean Lee. Sean Lee's on hand. He's controlling Pico and with the nether strike, they'll take away the Aegis. The chain cross still bouncing. The zombies pushing back make believe, and even the Satyr Tormentor gets in on the action. Medusa pounding away. Four protect one is paying dividends. The Echo Slap, it's decent to look at, but it comes in a bit too late. Make believe will manage to clean up Shondi, and Blue Frog stays alive thanks to the Ghost Scepter. Make believe manning up, but he has to realize that he's lost two of his other codes. They lose Blue Frog on the side, and after Hurricane pikes forward, pops the Mask of Madness, and brings down Make Believe. A double kill for the Medusa. Aegis and Cheese taken away. And maybe the Yodas are still not out of this game. This is such a back and forth affair coming out. Again, the MVP here, that fight has to be that bloody tombstone Dyer's on the floor. He's, he's just spawning zombie pressure. after zombie, racking up the slows. He's also got the level Dyer's 20 talent where the zombies do more damage. You could see the Sven down. getting ripped apart by the zombie army clawing at his feet. And now it's their turn to push. Akramux, for the first time, are in a position where they have to defend their high ground and they're even going to be forced to pop a buyback on Grape, a secondary buyback on Blue Frog, but without an Echo Slant, a Chain Frost, fired off into the wind here. Abs is actually scared of this. I mean, Blue Frog has fought back. He's got the fish in the use, but um, not sure if it's going to be enough. He could have possibly tried to use the fisher to keep Abs away from the tower, block his vision. But heck, Abs has the hurricane pike. Just four stops aggressively. The tier three Dyer's under siege. They're not committing their buybacks. The They're going to be a little disciplined, a little patient. They're going to give away a lane of barracks, but have the Sven and the Bristleback got enough in them. Max is respawned. Abs going to run away. Blue Frog needs to catch one of them. The fish are not going to connect on the kale. He doesn't have a four star just yet. And well. The Serpent Ward, or the Plague Ward, is rather going to cancel the Plague. Alright, you can see Pings coming out towards the middle lane. They want to go for that K3 tower, but at this point, I think the high priority kill is the Undying or his Tombstone if he hasn't uh, popped it already. Do you think the Axe pickup on Max was the right way to go? Probably not, nope. I mean, I mean you get more stacks. You get more war path, war path stack. But he's chosen not to go for the war path damage per stack talent, so I'm not really sure if that's counterproductive or if it was necessary at all for that matter. Okay. Max should have considered getting himself a heart or maybe finishing the Crimson Guard first. Blade Mill. Blade Crimson Mill. Guard. I mean, yeah, Blade Mill isn't terrible, but I think it's a bit underwhelming at this point in the game, it, okay. especially for a hero that's gone so far ahead with his item. Anyway, this is grouping up, they're marching down mid. This reeks of desperation. Hail with an arcane rune upon him. A couple of successful defenses like that and you could definitely see a comeback in the mid. Yeah, I mean, 52 minutes in, the net worth is back at 11k. It's all that separates these two teams. Sufficient to start off on the KL. Max with the axe doing a little bit of work. Kiko just jumps in, drops the storm hammer, pops his BKB and runs away. So they've gotten the tier 3 tower. Now they can go for the mega creep. But they don't have a BKB on Kiko, so that might be a bit of a deterrent oh. going The arrow way. connects under 11. Max could go in. Kale just goes out aggressively in immediate moonlight shadow. Have they got detection? Well, they've got better. They've got Kiko Connor and Sean Lee spawning away on him. They're kiting the scent, they could trolling him and with the blood right they'll bring him down. Where was Blue Frog with the Echo Slam when you needed it? Just not there and the entirety of the Akramax just back off. Kiko just making a minor mistake there. And, I mean the entire team makes a bit of a mistake there. Why would you go in when you know that your BKB is not available on the Sven? The creeps last longer. 
This <laughs> is not a good sign at all for uh, Aftermarks. I mean, they're basically pissing away the advantage up against a Medusa, who's got enough gold to buy that full Scari online. I'm not sure why they're going without spending that money. 8,000 gold on a Medusa and you're not buying anything with it. This seems like an absolutely silly thing to be going up yeah. with the high ground. Fisher has it blocked it out. It looks like it might have just been about to be baby and goes for the range barracks. Is that even worth his time? I don't know. She got the range barracks. She popped a BKB. Blue Frog trying to catch her. He has a Fisher coming up cooldown in a bit. Both of them first half at exactly the same time. But there's a rough chop on Blue Frog. His oh, Fisher is decent. But who's going to really catch up? Make believe. Let's lose the arrows. Let's see if any one of them can make connection. They just can't. Blue Frog standing still thanks to the rupture. Max giving chase. Where's the nasal goo when you need it? It's just not there. Apps pops the mask command. This has the face boots, will run away. Shondi though needs to be careful. They have seen him. Gale walks in, drops the venom is Gale. The Fisher almost blocks him. That haste rune though. Just allowing him to buy enough time for his allies to get back into the base where the creeps are pushing in from the bottom and the top lanes. These mega creeps still proving to be problematic for the side of Yodas. I don't think the call is to wait for the next ages because honestly you're running out of slots now. Butterfly on make believe. You've got uh, Earthshaker with a Ghost Scepter. Bristleback who went for that useless Aghanim Scepter. <laughs> and Sven who's going for the Daedalus but can't quite afford it just yet. He's still holding on to a Refresher Shard by the way. I'm wondering if it's time you just hand over that Refresher Shard to someone like the Earthshaker yeah, instead. Yeah, I, I think you hand it over to the Earthshaker. Or even the Lich for that matter. I wouldn't Li mind Lich or Earthshaker, cost. both both could do really well with it. Either one of them could just provide a lot of crowd control while uh, the Sven as well as maybe the Bristleback just focus the barracks. Star Storms pushes coming in from all three lanes now. The top lane's pushing in slowly but surely. The bottom lane is amassing a wave as well. I think we need to approach this a little better. There, Who's they? Huh? Who's they? The uh, Akramas. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean they going... could pop a smoke, pop a moonlight shadow and try and loop in from the side or they could just give a little bit more momentum to the sides uh, because Kale is committed heavily with the serpent wards, uh, the plague wards in the mid lane. Yeah, this isn't a good idea. You can't, run, you can't afford to run up the So, what's like going to happen is they're going to possibly commit a BKB and maybe get melee barracks. That's... I'm also not a fan of the talent that Kale has picked up. He chose not to get the 3x plague ward HP and damage. Instead, goes for the poison nova AoE. Those wards would have been the crucial key in the defense here. Not to mention a crucial key in their offense as well if they did manage to push. Yeah. But at this point, the game plan from Make Believe and the boys seems to be fairly straightforward. They're just firing off arrows into the higher ground, hoping that one or two connect. And if they do, they're going to possibly go in to try and end this game. Mm -hmm. There's a fortification still available, so Kiko cannot get trigger happy. He can't just BKB God Strength and start focusing on buildings. Uh -huh. That's never going to work. Yeah, he has to respect the glyph and... Be patient, I mean, otherwise you could be the ones who get baited into popping your BKBs while y'all are attempting to go high ground. Um, Medusa, has she bought anything with all that gold? Mm, she did finish up the Skadi and okay. now she's so got she's the Divine Rapier up. Yeah. Oh, both are, two arrows actually connected, but there's no creep wave to help them jump in after. It probably doesn't get much better than that. You have to go in because Medusa will wipe the creep wave in a matter of holding on to the refresher card. Max has picked up the blade mail now. He's put the vanguard in his backpack. Huh. What's the plan here? Are they falling back? Popping a smoke? Uh-oh. Medusa. She's bought one component. Has the other one almost picked up as well. It's going to be a divine rapier coming out on this Medusa. And there it is. Real men purchase rapiers. But Medusa needs to get it ASAP because the push is coming here. I mean, Max has gone in with the blade mail. Uh, I don't think they spotted out the rape. Arrow. They should sense that something's wrong. The arrow narrowly visits past Medusa. The rapier is on the courier. Max sees it. Max is chasing down no, the courier. No, he's got the rapier. Max has picked up the rapier. The glyph comes out. Kale goes in on the back line. They managed to eliminate 11 and Kiko's manning up. But look at this. Abs. Trying to run in, he's got the rapier upon him, pops the stone gaze. If Kiko's caught in it, he's going to be brought down. Either way, Apps has got more than enough damage and Max all by himself in the midst of the Yildas base. Finally gets taken down and Shondi with the Thosh just chasing down the rest of them. Picks up a quick double, the rapier paying dividends.
Unbelievable, that was such a clutch fight coming out from Yodas, picking up a rapier at the tail end of the fight and using it to rip a hole straight through the side of Akramux. Now Akramux are going to be playing defense here. You've got no buyback on the Sven, no buyback on the Lich and no Echo Slam on the Earthshaker. Can this? they defend versus oh, Abs and the Divine make Rapier Benisa? It is extremely difficult. I mean, I... Abs doesn't have mana though, so this is, this is a cause for concern. Is this how Dyer's the creep wave is far out as well. The bottom wave is pushing in, and the tier four is just about to fall. It's at six HP. Rat Dota is very likely here. If someone wants to buy back and TP has into the base. Okay. He's Look, got a Acme can't defend this by himself. They're Get gonna need to send someone back here to stop that ancient from taking chip damage. Mm -hmm. Medusa. Oh, regenerating back up again. On to make believe they're trying to bring down the Milano who pops a BKB. Gonna TP, she could have TP'd out. She has no I'm buyback. not sure why she didn't TP. That is a buyback on the Milano. Not sure what make believe is thinking. And Abs says, Thank you very much. I'm going to take your barracks. Focus it here first. Max comes running in with the vicious nation goo. He's trying to control Shandi. The Fisher is there. It's pretty decent. He's managed to catch out the Bloodseeker. They should get this kill at the very least. But Shandi gets the hell out of there. And Max, he's just going to show his back and run away. Abs now focusing another tier 3 with that Divine Rapier upon him. Max still has a blade mail, so he could run in at the Medusa and test his luck. Kiko is respawning in a bit and Abs pops a Hurricane Pike and gets away. Look for Blue Frog to possibly catch him on the retreat. He's not going to bother. The base though, look at the Ancient on the side of the Radiant base. It's just being beaten up bit by bit. The problem here is they could just straight up go down the middle lane now, Kiko and the boys. BKB, God Strength and Beat the hell out of the ancient. The glyph is no, on cooldown. There's no fortification for two and a half minutes. That should be the game plan here. I think you do this with the Mirana though. And you give the refresher shot to the Earthshaker. But I mean, 60 seconds respawn time on the Mirana, that means that there's only going to be about a one minute window where they have no glyph. It's such a risky play that uh, you the keep Akimaks the, are going to have to keep make. the waves pushed until then. That's, that's what you'd ideally hope to do. I mean, when people are defending throne, those three arrows are going to be huge. I, I think it's going to be huge. Yeah, I agree. You are going to need that Mirana in that sense. But uh, And she's got range and a butterfly. If, if nothing else, she's definitely going to help to speed down the throne. If that be, is the play. Yoda should be using this time productively though. They're not doing... Okay, they're going to smoke and actually try and make something happen here. This I mean, is, this is super risky because there's going to be no one to defend the push coming in from the top and the bottom side of the map. Okay, so it's, it's, it's too obvious if they move into the Rosh pit. Double I damage. see Roshan has respawned. I just don't get what they're doing here. They've got to get back. They cannot afford to find a pick-off like this. They need to go back and defend their yeah, base. So, yeah, this isn't going to work. The side lanes are pushing in. Um, a throne isn't going to defend itself. But hey, they're going to go for Roshan and then it's the all-out play. So all they need to do is catch the Yodas in their base and just, well, make the Sven and the Mirana TP in. I'm guessing you drop the Lincoln Sphere if you're apps right now and pick up the, that Aegis? Yeah. No, Sean Lee gets the Aegis. Um, not entirely sold on this, but okay. I mean, Medusa isn't really dying anymore. Quick sprint. Okay. She's got the cheese picked up on her, but... What do you swap out for the Chief and Lincoln Sphere in the thick of battle? I'm very worried for Akramux right now because their lineup seems to be falling off quite heavily. Kiko hasn't really progressed in terms of items. He's just holding on to that refresher shard needlessly. I, I think he has to give it to the Earthshaker. I don't give, know why he has it. He should have just. Give it given. to the Mirana. He's not doing any good with it. Hey, give it to the Lich. Once again, you can see Aftermax making a desperation play, starting to push out this middle lane. The problem is the fortification is back in 20 seconds and they're not going to come knocking on the high ground before it cools yes. down. I don't think they're going to go for the mega creeps here because at this point, I think it's pointless. Abs is just going to clean house on those creeps, even if they're mega. But I think you march mid, post fortification, fall back. Move. And then go for the ancient. Yeah, right? throne, uh, pop a smoke. Pop the moonlight, go for the throne. Go all out. Go. That's that's hopefully what he wants. Gale want to do. does have a buyback though, so picking up picking him off here would be nice to have, but not exactly crucial. It's. I don't think he's looking for any more items. Okay. He's, he's got a hex queued up, and he does have the money for it. But look at this man. He's holding on to a refresher shard of his own. Jesus. That's a lot more useful in terms of just refresher shard alloc. 
allocation. <laughs> what is this man doing with his? I, in fact, I think they should just consider giving it over to the Undying Man. The Tombstone has been the real winner for the, most of these fights, and having two Tombstones is disgusting. I don't know. Oh wow, it actually caught both the Veno and the Bloodseeker, and they're still not committing to this. Mostly because Earthshaker is not here. Yeah, Blue Frog doesn't have BOTs. He's all by himself pushing out the top half of the map. He's got gold for that uh, Ed Blade if he wants to pick it up. Acme. Solar Crest exactly. is just uh, a luxury hmm. item at this point. I don't think it's doing too much uh, up against the entire squad of Oh, make believe. Almost gets stacked by that rupture. Double damage. Thank God Mirana has two lead charges. We've had a stalemate of sorts. Neither side's willing to push just yet because the entire fate of this game hangs in the balance. After taking Roshan, they're still not confident enough to go pushing onto the high ground. They're not able to push out the lanes quickly enough to uh, avoid being ratted. I mean, they should be able to rat. Medusa can deal with the lane. It's, it's only two sides of Mega Creeps. Kale can at least hold on to base if nothing else, and then BOT into uh, a high ground siege if it does ever happen. I'm thinking the ideal way to start this is with having Kale defend the base and push out as much as he can. While the rest of the four heroes to go barreling down a lane, possibly mid, where they've already got the Mega Creeps, and then move into the other lanes and either take the barracks or go for the Ancient. But sitting like this in your own base is, is not going to help too much. They're going to get... They, they both got a little more wiggle room to grow with. Medusa has the option to get the secondary rage here, probably in exchange for that Hurricane fight. She's also got the option to get the Moon Shard first. Swifter than ever! There's still space to grow for the Sven though. Yeah, got He's picked up the Moon Shard over the Deadless. And uh, can still complete the Deadless. Maybe uh, swap out the Echo Saber with a more impactful item. I can't say something. Invisibility! Yeah. The only way you're gonna avoid taking that nuclear damage straight from the base is by having nuclear. Butterfly is the only thing we've got going so far for them. Halberd, Solar Crest, all of that. I mean, Halberd, it's still such a good game to be picked up. Shondi, he's out of the This is fun. This should be happening. I mean, he pops the BKB, drops the blood right on the floor. His team is coming nearby. Kale is there. Kale wants to back him up. He pops the Shivagat. The Echo Slam is there. Venom is gained number one. Kale pops his BKB, drops the Poison Nova as well. And uh, he's going to try and run. The Storm Hammer is there. They're controlling the Venomancer. And they'll bring him down as well. Kale came to help his teammate, but only ended up giving away his life while Make Believe caught 11 out of position. Yeah, that one death uh, on the Spirit Breaker as well as those multiple buybacks really hurting uh, the money on the side of the earth does. I mean, both teams are pretty much uh, dead even now. It's been an up and down uh, day in terms of team net worth here. And uh, one fight is pretty much going to make the difference between who wins and who loses today. Couldn't agree more. But... Uh, I think everyone on the side of the Dyad does have buyback, so they have two lives at the moment, whereas you know for a fact that the Venom and the Bloodseeker don't have a buyback on the other side. Mm -hmm. Both teams have suddenly chickened out here. It's the calm before the storm, but... I don't, I don't blame the Aftermux for chickening out. Yeah, I don't. Do you uh, want to go? Absolutely don't. That's, but that's a Moonshot finish up on the Dusa also. I'm, so. I'm a little dis disappointed that they haven't popped the smoke in a while. And this is also one of those games where Medusa would probably be cursing herself for not getting the modifier's talent on Split Shot. Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, if she stands on the front line, she basically hits everyone with that rapier damage. And there's the chance to proc this Mjolnir across the board. So some insane AOE damage coming out from the Medusa as long as she can get in position. Kale didn't finish up the Scythe of Vice either. He chose to buy back. Yeah, he bought back. But the courier is dead. Unfortunately, we can't see what's in the courier. So maybe he did pick it up. Here is respawn. Has it? No, it's still there. We're now approaching the 70 minute mark. Um, something I, that I, only I... happens in. In the rarest of rare games. <laughs> but it, it's not like this is approaching the 70 minute mark because of stellar play, let's be honest. It's because both sides have suddenly decided that, okay, we've never seen this territory of Dota before. We don't know what to do anymore. Let's just hope that something goes wrong on the other side and we can make something happen in our favor. Mm -hmm. Haste. I mean, don't, don't you think the ideal play on the side of... Uh, Akramux is to make something happen. I mean, there's a five second buyback cooldown on the side of the yeah. Bloodseeker and the Venno. You know that Courier died with something in it. You're never going to get more of an advantage. They, they are trying to. I mean, they popped a smoke, they're moving towards the bottom lane. Thankfully, there's a Radiant Sentry, so that's going to scout out any Invis heroes. Blue Frog lurking nearby with that Invis rune. He's picked up a gem as well. And um, yeah, should be able to scout out the observer. They're all grouped up. The fissures there. A quick post off to keep Eleven alive, and the smoke has been dispelled. Max leading the way. He's got the heart as well as the octreme go. They've had enough. Mirana's is really far away from this fight. This is not He's a good position for Akramak. Got POTs, but yeah, do they want to go in is the question. Kiko goes in. Let's lose the Storm Hammer. Gale just pops the Shiva's guard. Gets into the midst of battle. Pops the BKB. Let's down the Venomous Gale. But he's taking a whole lot of physical damage. Doesn't pop the poison over just yet. Pops it only now. The cleave ensures the death on 11. While in the mid lane, make believe manages to secure the range barracks. Max in the mid lane, manning up, focusing the tombstone. The stone is though doing worse, pushing them all back, killing Grape on the Lich King, and moving now on towards Max and securing that kill as well. While Shondi deals with make believe in the mid lane, who's been pushed to pop his BKB, but Shondi with the Abyssal Blade cancels the CP, drops the rupture upon the Mirana, a hex comes through from the Venomancer, and they finally deal with make believe. No buyback on the Lich, but there's a buyback available on the Mirana as well as that Bristleback. A little questionable coming out from uh, Akramux. They, that was such a haphazard team fight. Kiko blinks into the Blood Ride twice, tries to take a man fight versus an Undying, who you know is going to respawn courtesy his level 25 talent. And all the while, you had Medusa just coming in from the back lines and starting her damage. I think he goes that. Oh. Shondi got a little. Well, unfortunate in that last fight, he got tagged with an arrow while the Medusa went in with the Stone Gaze. If he wasn't tagged by that arrow, I'm pretty certain we'd have seen a lot more deaths on the side of Akramux. Mm -hmm. Buybacks available on both those cores, but they're going in nonetheless. You see the Medusa walking through the middle lane. Are they going to go for the barracks or are they going to go for the game itself? It looks like the call will be the barracks. An enrage or rather a blood rage thrown on apps after all of the damage is already picked up. Can you be more disgusting, Yodhas? Oh, they've got Shondi once more. He pops the BKB as well as the Shadow Blade. Oh, no, he adds the Nexon Kale and Kiko says, thank you very much. No buy He enchanted him on the ground. 122 seconds with Dust the Venomancer. Can they catch another though? Apps has moved into the rush. No, this not a good call at all. Not a good move at I all. I mean, they could just march down mid. Okay, instead they're just going They need to the... defend their own Ancient though, because there's a wave of creeps just racking up there in front of the Ancient. And that's two Siege creeps as well. It's really fortunate that they have effigies for some reason slowing this down. But now you've got Mirana TPing back to ensure that the Ancient doesn't Eleven drop like this. Look, looking to cancel TPs. Okay, Shandi's moved into the rush pit. So, I presume the players get Roshan and Aegis. 11 with the charge. Keeping tabs. Grape and Kiko nearby. This is a hard defense without the Earth Shake or Blue Frog making his way towards the Rosh pit. It seems as if the Yodas have backed out. And Kiko will be the one probably claiming Roshan. Well, Acme is coming out here by himself. And again. Oh, Blue Frog. A oh, Fisher. It's perfect. The arrow, it's not there. Grape box in, but Acme is just going to TP out the arrow. A second delay. 
Yeah, the lack of vision over there is kind of coming back to hurt them, but this yeah. should be a confirmed Roshan. Aegis. Please get the refresher off the blue frog. The Maybe. refresher shard. I mean, is Kiko still holding on to that level refresher shard? No, nope. looks like he dropped it. Okay. I, yeah, I think you give it over to either the Earthshaker or the Lich. Well, Kiko's gonna pick it up once again. Huh. Questionable stuff. I mean, the I, I see its value, but the problem is if Kiko goes in, he doesn't often come out or doesn't get a chance to <laughs> pop another refresher shard. In that sense, it's wasted. So yeah, yeah, I, I really think it should be on Grape. I, I, yeah, give it to Grape, give it to Blue Frog. Both of them are really viable candidates. But yeah, it seems as if the Aftermonks have had enough. They marched down with the arrow connects onto Shondi. The Fisher to control him. Someone needs to focus the barrack. What? The Echo Slam hits well. It's just control at this point. While Kiko kills he 11 on himself. the side. Shondi pops his BKB and runs. But Abs is here with the Divine Rapier. Ripping them a new one. Brings down the Swen. Max all by himself. He's got the ages. But the mini barracks are still standing. Make believe. He's left his bristle back and he's run back home. That's the death of Max again and they well, he has a buyback. I mean, they aren't utilizing their, their second lives very effectively. I don't, I don't even know why that Sven has that refresher shot at this point. So They're making some silly decisions. Maybe Give it to the Lich, damn it. That would have, you'd have a, you would have had two chain trusts in that fight while yeah. they were clumping up. So you'd have spread the fight up a bit more and bought some more space on the map for your, your cores to fight. I mean, that Echo Slam was just for Shondi, but it wasn't enough control, it wasn't enough lockdown. Did it even con did it even hit Shondi? I because think I, I think he echoed first and then tried to blink in. The Venomancer might have cancelled his blink and, well, Earthshaker basically did a selfie back there. That's, hmm. that, that seemed like an absolute misplay coming out from Blue Frog. Uncharacteristic of, of him considering how well he's been playing throughout this game. He's got the Hex though. This is definitely going to help versus the Medusa. Medusa still has a Lincoln Sphere though. He hasn't died in a long time as well. Dyer's I mean, make believe needs to attack. just right click objects a little more, I feel. Oh, he's look got at what they're doing though. Three oh. leaps, he's. They're gonna send the Undying back for now, and no real Rat Tota ensues once again. The Ancients are back up to full HP. So. I think we're once again at a stalemate. Yes, we are. Attack. The only advantage that Yodas has at the moment is that there's no fortification on the side of Akramux, but. It should be coming back in just a minute's time. The reset button has officially been hit and I've actually lost count of I how many Roshans have died this game. Yeah. Just your average everyday 74 minute Indian Dota game, ladies and gents. And uh, we still see no end in sight. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last time the Yodas played, it, it also ended up going uh, really deep into the late game. It was up against the Marksman. Uh, last time they prevailed, they made uh, better decisions. Eleven kept his calm, guided his team through these really tense moments in the late game. Let's see if he can do it again. For now, the Yodas, they've smoked up, they're marching down mid. Honestly, if they just march down to the throne and pound away, they could actually go through back to protection. But then, what's the chance you want to take? Can a Medusa base race a Sven and a Mirana is the question. Eleven pops the smoke, Max straight there. Oh, that that arrow one to two from Make Believe as he scurries away. The smoke is spelled. Are they looking for any form of counter initiation? Hex, when just TP's to the top lane. Make Believe even BKB TP'd there for good measure. No risks being taken at this point. With no buyback on Mirana, you absolutely have to bail like this. But, uh, that's exactly. yeah, that's another reset button that's essentially been hit. Rape. Looks down an observer ward for good measure on that cliff. That's going to give some vision as this push comes in from the bottom lane. But the problem is, top is already pushing out, and Shondi is the only one that's here to contest. He's actually gone for the Milston, and his Mjolnir is going to be finished up shortly after as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, given that he has the BOTs, I think he can join his teammates on the bottom lane if he needs to. Yeah. But Apps is feeling confident now. They've finally gone up on the cliff, and look at those barracks melt. You, you got to respond. You can't wait. No! Kill, kill, kill! Why would you stand back arrow. to the arrow? Look at the top lane though, Kiko. 
This is some cheeky stuff coming out from Kiko. He's in this, right next to Shondi. You've got to press buttons correctly. Maybe he has enough to deal with Shondi. Shondi has a lot of armor He wants to HP. cancel Shondi's TP. Okay, bottom lane, the fight's broken out. Poison Nova comes through. Hail dropping low. I'm <laughs> looking for the Sven, hoping to cancel that TP. He He's did actually it. actually man fighting with Shondi. He cancelled the TP. He's done exactly what is necessary. He has his team. Got what it takes to bring down the Medusa. They've taken down 11 while Abs manages to bring down, bring down Blue Frog. Acme just runs down the Lich, who's dead for 99 seconds without buyback. And Max comes in a bit too late, but the Echo Slam ensures that the Kiko base falls. Kiko, Kiko is breaking the base. Kiko's gone for the throne, and Shondi is the only one there to defend. Kale is going to get back in time as well. They haven't even got the melee barracks. Abs is going to TP back for now, but Kiko, his shenanigans have been spotted and punished. I mean, Max is TP back. Max is going for the barracks. Abs is here as well. Shondi comes running in. They've controlled the Bristol back. They've brought him down. Look at the damage! Oh, really, oh, I, There's a rage here on the floor. Soon. I, I'm really sorry. Abs is going once more. He's picked up the rapier. Max with the blade mill just popping damage after damage. He falls for 124 seconds. Abs picks up the rapier. Here's make believe with an arrow upon the blood seeker. But they don't have enough to deal with him. This is GG. They've just got to push down the middle lane and end this game right now. They've got a six second timer on Abs's BOT. The moment he TPs uh, yeah, back he, he there, BOT nobody stops him. Nobody stops the him. It's, it's make believe versus the Medusa, and I think Abs is going to win that one. What's he waiting for? Why isn't he DP'd out there just yet? This is so questionable. Both Shondi and the Medusa have BOTs. They should be TPing mid and just uh, going to I end mean, this game. I, I understand why he hasn't because he probably thinks that the Bristleback and the Sven are buyback. Well, they're going to go in now. Apps moves towards the middle lane, but Shondi continues to push to the top side. I mean, they're playing it safe. They're still going for three lanes of barracks, if anything. <laughs> Kiko shenanigans just next level. Shondi got stunned and his TP got cancelled there, but that actually works out for Apps because you have no Sven to defend versus the Medusa. Shondi's like, okay, you're going to cancel my TP. That's fine, I'll stay here, but you stay here as well. Mm -hmm. Arrow flies, misses by a hair's breadth there. Is this the beginning of the end? Because Apps is now walking up with confidence. They're going to move towards the top lane you here. You can drop the ice armor on the throne, right? Yeah, sure. you sure can. He hasn't dropped it just yet, though. Has, has he picked up the talent? Yeah. Okay, three seconds. Anyways, the Sven's back into distraction. The glyph has been popped. Blood right on the floor. Sven has respawned. Shondi focusing the throne. The moonlight shadow a second too late. They're going for the barracks. 11 keeping them busy. They're gone for Acme. But Ak pops his BKB. Focuses the throne. And they've done it. The Yothas win another game past the 70 minute mark.